2012 postseason. Here we are on VTTV Live again. I'm being I'm hosting today with uh, Victor, one of the producers. Uh, so my name is Devin. I'm one of the bosses here at the PTL, and uh, we've got a really interesting matchup for you today. Uh, we've got uh, Evan and Tim. Now um, these are both PTL veterans, and what they've decided to do today, they've both prepared a 60-point list. Um, and then one of the other PTL bosses here, Aaron P, has made five 70-point chips, uh, which have then been drafted by both of these players. Here in the PTL, um, the main rule we have is you can't fly the same named pilot twice in a season. And all of these ships that were presented to draft today were not played by either player in all of their 14 league games combined league games so. so so with that in mind uh both players had to pick their 60 point ships uh keeping in mind the possibilities that they had uh for their drafted ship right so uh very quickly we're going to talk about the 60 point ships that both players brought starting with tim so he has two mining tie fighters uh one of them which is the uh the popular captain seavor captain seavor is very good Yep. Uh, he was uh, recently price adjusted up two points, and he could probably go up a little bit more. And just the regular tie is great for getting in there and bumping and blocking. And Right, the ability to move through asteroids is going to basically he give them free reign of the center of the board, set up blocks. Neither, uh, neither player brought debris, so Tim's TIE Fighters get to ignore mm -hmm. all the rocks on the board right now. Okay, so then by contrast, uh, Evan's 60-point ship is more of like a centerpiece something he's going to supplement with his draft pick. So we've yeah. got uh, the First Order Special Forces TIE Fighter yeah. with uh, Quick Draw. And, and this is a really interesting build, a very light build on Quick Draw. So it's Quick Draw with Elusive, Special Forces Gunner, and Fire Control System. Elusive is very important to controlling when you take damage. Uh, with Quick Draw, you want to mitigate as much as possible. So it's it's very interesting to see that he's chosen to go with an ace that he thinks he can anchor a list on and then hopefully grab a support ship from the from the five ships we have. So we've got the five ships on the screen. Now remember, these are all 70-point ships, or at least as close to 70 points as possible. The first one we're going to talk about is a TIE Silencer, yeah. the first order test pilot, with uh, Lone Wolf and Proton Rockets. An interesting ship, but built, clearly built as a flanker. Compared to the E-Wing, which we're going to come to, I'm not sure that this this ship would get picked. The, the Silencer chassis is is pretty expensive still. I mean, that's a tough ship to use. You have to be very finicky, whereas some of the other ships are a lot more... Um, you'll get a lot more utility out of them. So I don't, know, I, I don't know how I feel about this one. Okay, next ship we're going to talk about is Captain Kagi. Captain Kagi's on the Lambda shuttle. pretty great. Pull target locks from the silencer or from the E-wing and sort of prevent damage to you know Evan's ace or away from the TIE fighters. Be a really great way of preserving some of these ships. Um, and he's got some great upgrades uh, in terms of uh, Darth Vader, which has been seeing a lot of play, and um, ISB slicers, which will um, be able to he'll be able to with the jamming beam jam people and then keep them jammed. Okay, so next ship we're going to talk about is uh, Scum Lando Falcon, 70 points, and uh, it's it's loaded up with a bunch of crew. We've got L337 with four LOM, Hotshot Gunner, Trick Shot, and the uh, Lando's Millennium Falcon title. I mean, this is this is this is really funky. Uh, four LOM's I think the defining piece here. Stop them from spending it. Take the Ion tokens, and then with Lando's ability, you can reroll blank results. And so, and with L337, you can reroll attack dice, and you yeah. can flip the card, right? And then when you flip the card, it makes your, your when you're not shielded, you can, all of your banks are green. So it's going to be a little bit of a, a synergy there with Lando. Lando's going to be stressing himself to reroll, right. and then L337 is going to be helping get that <coughs> stress off. So the, the whole purpose of this, this ship, right, it's basically a long-range gunship. Between the trick shot and Lando Falcon title, uh, adding the dice on the attack, making sure that they're very consistent attacks due to Lando's ability, as yeah. well as denying the opponent any defense between Forlom and the Hotshot Gunner as well. Yeah. Now, the Hotshot Gunner won't help that particular attack, but it will set up the other attacks on that same list from uh, becoming evaded. Next up is uh, our only rebel ship in the draft pool. It's a 70-point Rogue Squadron Escort E-Wing with proton torpedoes and fire control system. 
Uh, the only thing I, I wish it had was uh, an R3 astromech instead of the fire right. control system. So the, the um, role of this ship is basically a long range. Uh, like flanker missile boat. Yeah. Right? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So it because it can get its target lock at beyond range three, so mm -hmm. it can set up on the first couple of turns. Yeah. Uh, take its shot, and then it still has enough firepower to knife fight. Uh, it's gonna be more maneuverable than the than the the two shuttles for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I, it's interesting that there are two sort of damage dealers, uh, like flankers that have been put in. It'll be interesting to see which they go for the rogue squadron escort or the. Uh, the, the test pilot, you know, to see if, it'll be interesting to see if both get picked or if one gets picked or not. All right, and the last ship on our list is the uh, Upsilon class command shuttle with Petty Officer Thanison. Uh, upgrades are Pattern Analyzer and Captain Phasma. So you're seeing uh, Phasma paired with Thanison quite a bit. This is going to help you set up for the next round. Right. So at the end of the engagement phase, if you're in near the shuttle, whomever picks it is going to be able to assign you a stress token which will become a tractor beam token, and then they're going to push you off. And this could synergize with with Captain Kagi, right. and all of a sudden you're finding yourself stressed, ion, uh, stressed, jammed, tractor beamed, and it's got a jamming uh, beam as well. So if yep. you're at zero to one in arc, like, you're going to be screwed. Now that we've talked about the ships, we're going to see what both players decide to draft after which we'll sit them both down and talk about their choices and how they're going to uh, approach deployment. Now you've chosen the the Upsilon and Lando's Falcon. Now can you walk me through which one you chose first and why you chose that one first? My uh, my decision was tremendously strategic in that I wanted Max Lulls. So that was the Upsilon. I, I just wanted to go for the Upsilon and the Lando's Falcon. No, I see a tiny bit of uh, synergy uh, between uh, Captain Phasma that's yeah. on um, Petty Officer Thanison as well as Lando's ability. Um, with uh, with his Lando's Millennium Tyke and I was shooting at stress ships, being able to stress everybody at range one. I saw a little bit of that. I wanted to be able to um, put a significant amount of health points on the board as well. The the two ships that I chose to go with, uh, the two uh, mining guild ties, um, they're pretty flimsy. I'm really thrilled with the way this is this is shook out. I think that Evan's probably gonna have a really good chance of taking me here, but I'm gonna definitely gonna give him a run for his money. I was wondering if you could walk me through um, your thoughts behind Quick Draw. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I just wanted someone who was kind of versatile. Like, okay. I, you know, you looked at something like Soontir, and Soontir would fit with like Duke or something like that, but he's fragile. And then, yeah. you know, I, I actually looked at two, two Mining Guild ties, which uh, was a close bet, and honestly, I didn't pick it because I didn't remember if we'd said two ships was allowed or not. Uh, turns out we had. Uh, yeah, I just wanted something versatile that, that I felt would go in well. So I chose Kagi first, A, because he had a bid. He was the only one that was 69 points. The others were all 70. Okay. Um, and once I'd seen the, the list of available ships, a lot of them were I-4s, so I realized bid would, would be worth something. Quick Draw obviously doesn't want to get nuked to one turn, so I figured uh, knowing there was the E-Wing proton torpedoes out there, Kagi would be good if, if uh, he picked the E-Wing. Um, and, you know, just a solid ship, Vader's a solid yeah. crew. So. Walk me through why you didn't choose the, the poor silencer. Because uh, he has both his ships have abilities that trigger off stress, and the silencer ship ability triggers off stress. So even felt like the, the better pick. No, Walk me through what you've done and how what your plan for the game is. Sure, I put Thanos in where, um, where it is because I wanted to figure out where Kaji was going to go down and plan my, uh, my route that way. Yeah, you know, you've got, I can either turn into the middle or I can turn out to the board edge and come around. So um, a lot's going to depend on how quickly Evan goes with the E-Wing. Um, I think Quick Draw is in quite a bit of pr trouble. I have a lot of token stripping and mitigating um, mechanics in my list. This looks like a pretty standard Aces setup in the corner, but maybe if you could you know, break that down for newer players or people who might not have seen that before. Yeah, yeah. so I just want to stall out, see where Lando commits. I, don't, I, I assume Lando's going to come along uh, Tim's side of the board, but Lando could also hard turn up and come down uh, this bottom side of the screen. Yeah. Um, so stalling the shuttle for a turn and, and Quick Draw give me a chance to, to see where he's going with Lando. Uh, and then the E-Wing, it's, it's an I-4 I ace in this game because uh, Tim has initiative, so um, put him somewhere he kind of flanks, but I'm not committed in case 
uh, Tim did decide to go hard down that, that bottom side of the board. Captain Kagi's not the most maneuverable ship in the universe. Mm -hmm. How many rounds of combat do you want that to see? How are you planning on keeping that in, in the action? I mean, with the rear arc, I don't mind if he gets past and starts vadering and shooting out the rear arc. Um, I probably won't do much stopping with Fanison uh, um, and Lando both benefit from me stopping. So I'll probably end up just kind of flying past. Um, and honestly, if he if he lives and flies past and just starts vadering out the back, that's cool with me. Can you tell me why you didn't choose the test pilot? Uh, because silencers are dumb. I, I have these horrible, like, PTSD flashbacks of chasing a Kylo around a board for 40 minutes in, a, in tournaments, so I just look at a silencer and I actually become physically ill. <laughs> no, I, I, I was, I was kind of thrilled with the idea that the 60 points that you had to choose discreetly could have been one ship for 60 points or what you've done with me, which is two, two small ships. ships. Yeah. You know, for, for the league to agree on a pool of, of draft ships and do this very simple draft format, as long as you're not repeating name pilots that you've flown, which is the mm -hmm. core role of the PTL, then I really see this being a fun format. And in the immortal words of Russell Crowe, Are you not entertained? I think this format's awesome. I, uh, yeah. I mean, it relies on someone who can, can build a bunch of ships for you that are kind of interesting and well-balanced uh, sure. and don't don't end up with game-breaking combos if you happen to pick something that'll that'll combo with it. Um, but Aaron did a great job of that, so a lot of credit to him. Uh, and I'm really excited to, to try this out. All right. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to watching this game, and uh, thanks for sitting down for a quick chat. Awesome. All right, so what do we got? We got Tim moving first. He's going to get his mining ties into position. Probably going to go up the, go up the center of the board, right? Um, Tim was pretty cagey. He was saying he really wants to see where where Kagi's going to go mm -hmm. and how he's going to engage based on um, how the shuttle ends up moving forwards. And um, Evan was pointing out that the, the Rogue Squadron Escort uh, will take on more of an ace role in this game. Because Tim has initiative, all of Tim's ships move before Evan's ships move. Right. And so this will be... Um, 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 so it's really up on Tim to... Uh predict where Evan's going to be, block his ships, get shots. Yeah, which Tim has a great list for that with Thanison and the, the mining ties. Um, but certainly uh, we've seen uh, their Th Thanison stopping, taking a stress. Uh, Tim just sort of creating a little block. Because of the new uh, tournament rules, um, what Evan's calling stalling out there in the corner or fortressing, where he's can, he can stop for two turns. So like round one he can do a one forward with the shuttle bump into quick draw right. the second turn he can do a stop maneuver and then he doesn't actually have to actually move his shuttle until round three um, is within the the rules of the game so um, so you're saying that uh, Tim does a full stop turn one yeah turn so. two he's gonna block with his mining tie no I'm saying that's what position. Evan has done Oh, I see. Okay. Evan is the, there's, yeah, sorry if I'm saying shuttle and being uh, <laughs> in specific. Um, they're the Rogue Squadron Escort using the one forward. Evan also being um, a little coy there and, and playing, you know, well, waiting for, for Tim to commit. Tim's waiting for Evan to commit. Evan's waiting for Tim to commit. And both of them are going to hang back a little bit to sort of see where the other is going. Well, like we mentioned, uh, the Rogue Squadron Escort has the ability to target lock beyond range three. Yeah, I so, think that's the decision Evan's making right yeah. now is where he wants that to go. And um, so I would imagine the oh he decides to boost. The so now the E-wing so. e has a linked action, right? So he can boost into a target lock. Ah. So he will be able to take a stress and uh, acquire the target lock now. Um, if he does, I don't see the target lock. He's got a. A custom token on it, so we, we should be looking for target lock. I can't r yeah, I don't really think he, quite make it. I out. don't think he ended up target lock. Instead, he's just going to uh, just go not too far with this quick draw. I guess keep it um, close enough so that he can continue to block. Yeah. With the shuttle. So there we saw um, the shuttle do a one forward, which is blue. It bumped into quick draw because the, he deployed them in base to base contact. It did not move. Right. And now that allows him to do a, a small maneuver with quick draw, keep his ships sort of together. Uh, the, the, the shuttle is so poor at maneuvering that it sort of the longer you can keep it slow in, in on rolling into the engagement, then uh, the better. So now he'll be able to 
he is not stressed, so he's essentially stopped without stressing, and then now he'll be able to do a stop maneuver and get stressed. Now, uh, Devin, you had a chance to talk to both players. Yeah. You notice there's this huge gap here in the middle with no rocks. Um, that's going to be uh, interesting in that, well, it's not... Uh, it, that, that leads me to believe that maybe um, Tim is going to sail Lando's Falcon around this way to get maximal use of the trick shot. Of course, that all depends on where uh, Evan's ships go. But um, I actually think the the best place for Lando to be is in here in this lane, and that gives him a little bit of a a greater sort of coverage here mm -hmm. of uh, on on sort of both sides. And then certainly, uh, the closer you are to the rocks, the more likely you are to have an obstructed shot. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Right. Whereas right. if you're further away from some of these like smaller rocks, mm -hmm. right, uh, then the the closest the closest rule is how you determine an obstructed shot, and it's more likely that you're going to be able to draw a clear line past the smaller rock at a distance, um, and getting in and hugging and being close to the rocks is a is a great idea. And with the uh, the mining ties. Um, certainly, one of the things that is a great idea is to come right up to a rock. Not land on it, because you still can't shoot if you land right. on a rock. But come right up to it with trick shot, and then anything you shoot is going to be obstructed. And then the next turn you go over it, and you're fine, because you're, uh, you're a mining tie. Now, I was briefly talking to uh, Tim while you were talking with Evan about his deployment at the table. And uh, he was saying that... Uh, he went with Juke instead of Trickshot on his mining tie. Well, not only because Trickshot's no longer worth it at two points over one point, but uh, you're also... Um, Juke, I think, in addition to Captain Seabor's, or Captain Seabor's ability, is going to um, kind of ensure that hits go through. Rather than simply rolling more attack dice, the, the quality of your two attack dice with Juke is a lot higher because of Seavor's ability in Juke. Absolutely. Juke's one of the, the best upgrades in the game, and and uh, that synergy with, with Seavor is great because he does only have that two-die attack, and um, he'll be able to strip the token and push damage through the Juke. So Juke says if, if Seavor has an evade, which is always great to take on a TIE Fighter, it prevents one damage, or it guarantees one damage prevented, um, it, when you attack your opponent, the opponent has to change an evade result to a eyeball result. Now, if you have stripped, if you've stripped that with the jam token, then um, you know that he can't spend a focus he doesn't have. That's that's a, a great idea. So we're here. We're seeing. Um, do we have a stress on Kagi? No, but we do have a target lock from the Rogue Squadron, so that has gone on. It looks like Seavor. Yeah. A slow move there from um, from Quick Draw, and we must have a stress somewhere on Kagi because it hasn't moved, and they're back to dials. Now I'm. Oh, it yeah, oh it's there, and it's it's <laughs> uh, yeah okay it's it's it's, it's a camouflage stress can, token. Yeah. The clear, the clear tokens are not always the greatest. So with, uh, with Quick Draw's ability and Evan having the luxury of being able to move Quick Draw last, what do you think his strategy is going to be? Is he going to try to get between as many of uh, Tim's ships as possible, get behind the Upsilon shuttle? He perhaps? absolutely is not going to be double. Like, with the new SFs and with, well, with Quick Draw in particular, attacking out the front and the back on the same round is not good. So in 2.0, you can only get one bonus attack per round, ever. So you can only ever attack twice. Um, so Quick Draw very easily could get two, three or four attacks in a round. So if you positioned yourself in a way that you can shoot out the front and the back, and then you lose a shield and you shoot out the front and the back again, that would be great. But you can't do that because you only get one bonus attack. So if you position yourself in a way... Here's uh, Tim auto bumping again. Both players are going to be bumping their shuttles, trying to slow them down on their way in. Um, so, if Quick Draw chooses to shoot out the front and the back at the same time, and then when he loses a shield, he can't take that bonus attack. Okay. So, 
you're going to see the the turret locked to the front, and you're going to see him try to arc dodge uh, Tim's big ships as much as possible. Because if Quick Draw takes... Energy, right? uh, so when Crickdraw loses a shield, he has yeah. the op- he can spend his, right. okay. his charge to perform that bonus attack. <clears throat> but that bonus attack is mitigated by the fact that you can only take one bonus attack. So the heavy weapon turret allows you to, sh- or the um, the uh, if you can put special forces gunner up, special forces gunner allows you to take an attack out the or to attack out the back at the same time, right? But you can only have one bonus attack. Right. So, Quick Draw sort of got like this. Um, he's got more attacks than he can actually use, right? So, with Quick Draw, you want to lock that turret to the front, get that extra die in the front, and he can't afford to take a four die or five die attack from either of Tim's big ships. Right. That's just going to suck. Quick Draw is going to want to take a damage from Juke Sevor, right? Um, and Tim's going to really need to get multiple arcs on target to get that damage in that he needs to quick draw. Because with quick draw, you don't want to get damage in in dribs and drabs. You want that damage in big chunks. You want to take right. two or three shields off at a time. Uh, if you take one shield off and then one shield off and then you hit him for three, <laughs> well, he's still got his three bonus attacks. Well, now look at what Evan did. He kind of juked Tim into thinking perhaps uh, his E-Wing was going to engage like this. But instead, uh, he's, he's moved that that, yeah, that he's, E-wing very quickly from where it started. He's acting it as bait almost, flying him all so the way. He did a one forward yeah. boost, five forward barrel roll, four forward boost. In three yeah. turns, he's across the board. I guess he's trying to get behind Thanison, um, maybe force force uh, Lando to turn towards him. Absolutely. So. If this, if if the Anison starts turning in here, it's going to be very difficult for it because of this rock to really get any sort of a, a real position in this game, and so um, he's Evans really sort of pushing Tim to engage into this zone uh, where he'll be able to bring Vader into play and uh, and quick draw in, and he'll he'll be able to get maybe three. Okay. He'll be able to get. Um, I think he's gonna be able to get a big net into this zone of maybe three arcs in the next round. So it's a it's a lot quieter today than we expected. So we're going to uh, we're gonna try not to uh, give both players advice. Although I mean, if anyone knows anything about the Prototype Toronto League, both the players we have on camera right now, of course, Tim is none other than Timbo Slice, regular time commentator on our channel. Uh, and Evan is quite possibly one of the best X-Wing players in Toronto. Oh, absolutely. Constantly in the... So they don't need our help. <laughs> no, and they're, they're, they're probably going to laugh at me for my idiotic comments and, and opinions on stream uh, later. Tim will point and laugh, and then right. probably buy me a drink. And then just for the people that are tuning in right now uh, on the live stream, this is a special format uh, dubbed somewhat impromptu, uh, the gladiator format, where both players brought a 60-point uh, ship, or, or uh, a- any it, amount of ships equal. They did list 60 building points. to 60 points exactly, and then uh, our league boss Aaron uh, supplied them with five 70-point ships, of which they got to draft two of them, mm-hmm. and that's why you see a bit of a mishmash in factions on the table today. Uh, we had a mercenaries format in 1.0, right. which we're still done, which is where you have 70 points of rebels or imperials, and then you took. Um, 40 or 50 points of scum so you had over 100 points on the table and then um, we've also got the uh, welterweights which is where you have to take a name shift right uh, under i4 and under Mm -hmm. uh, which is really fun that's a cool thing i like about the the ptl especially even in the playoffs right it's not simply about what's the best performing list or what are the medalists or whatever. Mm-hmm. You have to constantly be thinking about, you know, uh, long-term planning during the regular season. Do I burn my good pilots now yeah. or do I save them for later? And even now, the the fact that everyone in the PTL, you know, is so comfortable with experimentation that both these players decided a couple of days ago, hey, you know, instead of doing just a regular in the PTL format match, mm-hmm. 
we're going to go ahead and do something special. We're going to do something crazy, you know, something that both players didn't necessarily know what what they were going to end up playing with. They didn't even know what their opponent was going to play. Mm -hmm. And now they kind of have to figure out, okay, you know, what ship can I bring that's going to synergize with ships that someone else has designed for me? Mm -hmm. What uh, what do I draft to either deny my opponent that ship in their list or uh, to maximize my potential of my 60-point ship? That sort of thing. So it's really cool. So here, uh, <coughs> Vanison has come up and uh, reinforced the front. It looks like Seavor is bumping into the back of Thanison, uh, and we're train tracking it and then getting those those out of there. Um, now, to to your point, that I just wanted to bring everyone up to speed on what's going on in the mat on the games, explaining what those guys are doing. But uh, to your point, there was uh, a period of time 1.0 where a bunch of the PTL aces, a bunch of the guys, or some of them would just play rando matches. Now. <laughs> It used to be one of the list builders. You could just randomize a list, and then they would just be like, you, you get to randomize three lists. You get to pick the one that you like the best, and then that's that. Um, and certainly, um, we got the thumb screws out, and we got Stephen <laughs> uh, Kim, who's a, a local here, who built uh, you know, the Squad Builder 2.0. And you can find the, the randomizer uh, button on... On yet another Squad Builder 2.0, just uh, and then you're saying that's a result of uh, that's experimentation in the PTL. Yeah, uh, there was um, Alan Fung did an entire season of uh, random matches, and he made it uh, pretty far. I'm not, I don't know if that's the season. I can't remember if that's the season he won. I don't think so, but I think it was the season after he won. He just did. He got to the top eight, and even in his top eight match, that was just all random. So now we're seeing Evan delaying the. Uh, engagement even another round um, pulling back with all of his ships sort of waiting to get the Upsilon in there and certainly here that's a very dangerous place for Quickdraw to be I think I mentioned that Quickdraw does not want to take um, big attacks from the big ships and here we can see that he is in um, uh, we need to delete things sorry he is clearly in the arc of both of these ships. Uh, and so that's going to be very dangerous for Quick Draw. It's a very dangerous place for her to be. Now, um, Juke is back here, unfortunately for Tim, instead of right up front. Um, and then, because Quick Draw would be in three arcs at that point. But I still think this is a, a very, I don't quite think that Evan expected Tim to go quite so fast with, uh, with Lando. And, All right. uh, I think that's certainly a very dangerous position for, for Quick Draw here. So here's the first attack. Evan's Quick Draw is going to fire on Lando, I believe. No, two hits. He's not going to spend that focus. Lando's going to evade one. It's interesting that, that Tim committed the way he did against Evan. I guess he's not worried about a shuttle coming up on the flank. I mean, it's not that big of a deal, right? Especially if you can eventually fly behind it. If he committed this turn, because of how slow Evan's shuttle was going, right. he can punk the ship or two in the middle and then try he's gonna try and kill something <coughs> if he'd if he'd managed to get Sevor out front I think quick draw might have been dead but oh. without Sevor being there right uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens to quick draw certainly quick draw being in the upsilon's arc in Lando's arc and if it there, there had been that additional juke um, I think it would have been very difficult you know this must be this must be Lando Lando's, back, Lando's yeah. Falcon He's just gonna leave it. Well, that's not that's not the end of the world there for Evan. Now the E-wing doesn't have a shot. The shuttle. Let's see. Looks like it just has a range three shot here. Um, let's see what he can do. Hit crit there. And it looks like uh, Tim's gonna take both of those. Shuttle down three shields. And that would be all the shuttle shields. Um, now, I'm probably on the next big attack into Lando's uh, Millennium Falcon. We'll probably see him uh, flip L337. Right. Um, all right. Hey, Thanison. Oh, this is Thanison attacking uh, Quick Draw, I think, right? This is Thanison on Quick Draw. This is going to be a four dice attack. No, three dice. Okay. Um. I imagine that might have been the jamming beam at this point. Ah, yes.
Is it really? That's range two? It's oh, hard no, to tell no. from this angle. He's rolled four dice. Okay. Sorry, folks. We don't have a table mic, so it's two hits. hard to... Uh, and I think he's going to... Let's see. Evan making a decision. So if he loses a shield here, he can shoot back, but it will be, I believe, without modification. Yeah, it looks Two like hits. a counterattack. It looks like it's at Lando's Falcon. Lando's Falcon spends the focus, takes another damage. I think this is good, right? I mean, um, take, taking that trade, especially just losing only one shield on that attack, getting your free attack back, uh, now you have Lando... <coughs> Lando's front and center of Evan's entire team. Uh, the E-Wing is going to swing around next turn, uh, maybe even switch its target lock to Lando's Falcon. I think if you burn that thing down as quickly as possible, all of a sudden you've got an Upsilon that's... I, I actually wouldn't shoot the around. Proton Trip because because he has L337. Right. Oh, um, gets to re-roll the he, attack he dice. You force him to re-roll all those attack dice. So, um, you know, deleting Sivor who's going to be like this little sniper is right. is something that's going to be like a a tie fighter has something like a 40% chance of just vaporizing with a proton torpedo shot. Now the, but the problem the, you have the same problem attacking Sivor with proton rocket sorry proton torpedoes anyway, right? Because with the jam token makes you lose the target lock so you wouldn't be able to reroll if you didn't get a good result. That's true. Yeah. Um, I mean he could just get lucky and roll four natties. Um and he could have a focus too, right? It's he'll just, he'll have a focus, yeah. but he. But you're right; he might lose that uh, that target lock. Still, I think the risk is worth worth it. You can see here that Tim's taking his time to sort of make some decisions. Um, certainly, I think whichever big attack happens to Lando next, whether it's the shuttle or quick draw, or like, or or a proton torpedo, whichever the next like four die attack is, that's where you're going to see L three three seven come into play. Um, the reason Quickdraw lost her focus was because of Hotshot Gunner from Lando, right? right. Which set up Thanison to do damage, and which prevented. Uh, well, Evan rolled two hits and a blank, but um, certainly I think this round we're going to see coordinate shenanigans from the shuttle. The shuttle's going to coordinate. It's got the title, so it's also going to be able to. So it's going to coordinate probably a target lock onto Quickdraw, or a focus on the Quickdraw, which will allow it to take a target lock. Probably on Lando's shuttle, so that the shuttles, so that uh, Kagi is going to have a fairly good shot at Lando, and as well, Evan has um, Vader. Now Vader can be used to 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 choke, or it can be you can use that force on on offense or defense, right? Right. So um, it'll be interesting to see which he chooses, and it might depend on how many tokens Lando ends up with or or his positioning. I believe you have to be in range two to use Vader, and so you can spend that force to mm -hmm. make them spend a token, or if they don't spend the token, they take a damage. And if they don't have a token to spend, then they take the damage. So there's a, a rather short maneuver here from uh, from from Tim with Lando. Yeah, uh, it looks like uh, Thanison went all stop. Now this is getting into what I was saying. If yeah. he turns in, it's going to be really rough for him to position because of the rock that's hiding here. Now, do you, do you know why he moved Lando before he moved uh, the Mining Guild ties? Was that just a sequencing error? Or? Um, probably because it wouldn't have mattered. The Okay. Because... Um, yeah, yeah that all would have cleared. I think that's fine. Yeah, would it? Okay. I thought maybe I missed something, like there was some ability that allowed Lando to move first in the turn. Uh, no, uh, I think they just sort of moved everything out of order. Just fly casual, folks. You know, the uh, the end result's pretty much the same. I don't think <coughs> that. Uh... So Wait. there's Lando doing his action because he for he realized that he moved Lando first by accident, and then so he moved the rest okay. of his pod okay. ones, and then has gone back to Lando, which is doing the boost. Yeah. Just just. Uh... I also have to mention that we actually do have a table judge for all we our do. PTL uh, playoff matches. So, so we have Aaron D up there. Yeah, Aaron, Aaron's up there, and so and I if, imagine that he. Uh, if it's kosher with him, then uh, then we're all good with it. He down was here pointing too. at the table just before Tim moved the ties, so that right. might have been might have been him. So now this is an interesting position for Lando's Falcon, 
right? Because it's sort of unless Evan called him to be out there, right? Right. It's gonna might be more difficult for him to get Kagi on target, and you might see the great thing about Kagi's coordinate, and then with the title of the target lock, is that that allows you to do it at his right. initiative, which is four. Now look look at this. He moved his E wing. Uh, now notice that the bow tie arc on the Lando's Falcon is pointing forward and backward, so he's not in the arc. And I think Evan's thinking whether a barrel roll this way would clear Captain Kagi's front arc. Oh, I think it would absolutely. Yeah. And this is great for Evan, right? Because not only does this dodge the, the front arc of Captain Kagi potentially, but now he's got that uh, proton that proton torpedo shot on Seabor, like we mentioned, right? Absolutely. Kagi um, coming in too. Um, you know, if, uh, if my eyes are correct, I think Kagi may also have a shot on Seabor. So this, this just may be a turn where all three of Evan's ships focus fire down Sivor and kill him because um, while Sivor does have that annoying ability the fact that he needs to spend an energy to do it means that he can only do that ability once per turn uh, either on attack or defense absolutely <laughs> so we've got Evan moving his dial I'm just trying to figure out how Lando's Falcon got that focus but uh, I think he's taking it away yeah no, that's interesting I didn't expect Quick Draw to just uh, bomb in so quickly and that's a very good move here that's um, cleared him of most of the arcs he's still got an arc from from Lando uh, he's still got yeah but, but that's, a, and, uh, that's a range two shot right and Seavor's got a shot now you'll see that Evan's avoiding focus uh, avoiding stressing himself um, and certainly the and that's because of Fantasin's ability right and Lando Lando and rolls Lando an extra too? die right. if you're stressed well, <clears throat> But, uh, you know, it's possible now that Evan has, looks like, well, two, two ships for sure, but possibly three, including Kagi, three ships shooting at Seavor. Um, Seavor may not survive to take a shot back at Quick Draw. So there's Quick Draw. Quick Draw was coordinated a focus by Kagi. Okay. Um, and now he has performed an evade action. So uh, certainly when Seavor jams him, um, as he will, he can so choose to remove either token. His choice. His choice. This is very interesting. I, um, I've i missed whom Kagi has target locked. Because um, I don't see the matching target lock down. Now, there may not have been anybody in range. Or it might be hidden behind Lando or behind one of the bat wings. Right. But certainly, I don't think Seavor here... You've got quick. He's in quick draw at range one, and he's got a range three shot here. Right. That's a dead tie fighter. So he's just checking the bullseye arc just yeah. to see if Seavor's ability does uh, trigger off this uh, this attack, and it looks now like it will. He's not in. in <coughs> he's not in Seavor's or Seavor is not in quick draw's bullseye arc. So uh, quick draw loses the focus, and then does a four die attack for one. Ouch! 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 Ooh. Um, does he take one? Yeah, it looks like Tim is going to take one on Seavor. Okay. He saved once that juke. Now, now, interestingly enough, uh, he uh, chose to remove the focus and not the evade. That Tim, nerfed his Tim, attack. I died. believe Tim, there was a recent ruling for the Phoenix Open, and I'm not really mm -hmm. sure. So so now it's the uh, the uh, Seavor's choice? It's the jammer's choice now and not the... Uh, I think so. The jammed, the jammy. <laughs> I couldn't tell you. I've forgotten, and it uh, uh, looks like uh, Lando's ioning himself for with Forlom. So if producer Travis can bring up Forlom's ability just to refresh that. Hooray! <clears throat> so he's saying that uh, if he's attacking Quick Draw, he's saying that Quick Draw cannot spend an evade on this attack. Um, and then... So now the idea behind that is, uh, well, you know, you, you really want to burn down Quick start Draw shields as much as possible. You don't want to get into a situation where Quick, quick Draw is only losing one shield per attack, exactly. thus maximizing his counterattack ability. So Evan getting nothing, spending elusive. Right. Uh, no, sorry, this is uh, Quick Draw's attack. This is a counterattack by Quick Draw, right? Yeah. All right. Here is the attack from. The shuttle. The shuttle looks like he's gonna. Evan's trying to figure out who he's shooting with the shuttle. 
whether it's going to be um, Sivor or um, Lando. Now, what do you know what crit Sivor took? Yeah, it was Hull Breach. Oh, that that's not even a crit. Uh, so Hull Breach <laughs> says the next damage you take is face up on a TIE Fighter, and if right. it's your last hit, it doesn't matter. And uh, Sivor is removed. Two more hits, and away he goes. Yeah, you called it uh, correctly, Devin. You said that the priority target for, for Evan was Sivor. Now that that's down. Uh, and he did he did spend one proton torpedo there, right? For his attack. Um, or am I mistaken? So what's, uh, what's Evan's next target? He's going to continue to focus down Lando. I mean, you got Lando at 7 HP already. Um, I'm not sure he really cares about Lando at this oh, yeah? point. Um, so Lando's only throwing two dice. Okay. Because Evan's taking pains not to stress himself. Right. I mean, um, there is a rock in that corner that's being hidden by the mm -hmm. by the Upsilon shuttle, so, the, so the, he could the set up a trick shot. is in a really rough place. Yeah. So the E-Wing can be very slow and get a shot. He has to do a very, a sh a sh very slow maneuver forward. Right. That's green, right? If Lando, Lando has to move. If he gets on, he can't die on again. So this shell's in a rough place, but I'm not sure if Evan really cares because he can still. Um, oh, you can still Vader. Darth Vader, right? Yeah. yeah. It's like it's really Vader. I, I don't think I don't think uh, Evan's gonna mind so much if he runs over a rock this turn. And he can Vader at the back as well. Oh yeah. Um, the, the backfiring arc too. Yeah. Um, so Lando's in a rough place. He has to rotate his arc next round. Correct. Yep. Right, because he's gonna come into the corner. He can't fall on again because he's because he's in a corner. Right, this guy's gonna chunk forward. He, it's gonna be in a real rough position. So quick draw is gonna have a shot on the on the upsilon. The E wings can have a shot on the upsilon, and the uh, the shuttle's gonna have a shot on the upsilon. You know, Tim remembering to move his uh, mining eagle ties first. <laughs> now he he's uh, because he ignores the rocks. He can focus on the rock, and the, so what he's done is he's set up a block. Right. In a position present, preventing that shuttle from going quickly. And that, and that focus is purely a defensive focus because he won't be able to shoot on the rock, but he can still use yeah. it on defense, right? Yeah. So now he's actually done a, a white maneuver here, staying stressed to get so to try and get that the big guns of the Epsilon onto, onto the shuttle. Um, because he wouldn't be able to get guns on quick draw with it. Right. And so this is a, an option where he's just going to throw raw dice at hopefully a... Um, token with shuttle and there's that turret rotation that you mentioned on uh on lando's falcon there yeah uh that's going to get him potentially it. uh a shot on the e-wing but it looks like that e-wing is going to bail instead uh perhaps boosting but he can, can he, he boost? can yeah he can boost yep. into a target lock and uh prepare to come back around again right not taking any actions with the uh the upsilon it might have been a bump i don't know so the um, it's hard to tell. Well, the uh, the upsilon, the upsilon was a bump, but the uh, the Evan actually stopped with the shuttle, right? Uh, which means that he has been assigned a tractor beam token uh, because he's in range two. Range two of uh, Thanison. Yeah. Okay. So now you are stressed and uh, have a tractor beam token. So. The Upsilon will be rolling zero of eight dice this round. But that tractor token doesn't actually affect his movement until he gets two more on there, right? Because it, um, it being a large base ship? Correct. Yeah. It's really it's really the uh, the reduction in defense dice. And I believe tractor tokens here. are now orange and round, yep. which means that uh, they degrade at the end of the round anyway. They'll go away. The ISB slicer, though, on... Uh, Means no, that, sorry. Means that jamming right. tokens stay. Okay. Only jamming tokens. Only jamming tokens. So Evan uh, goes ahead and uses Darth Vader, and I think Darth Vader was used on Tim's mining tie. <clears throat> I mean, that's another reason why he focused there, right? So he wouldn't have to take a damage from Vader. Oh, that's three crits there, and that's three shields off of the Upsilon. I believe that was quick draw. Ooh, checking for range two. Looks like it can be a range three shot. Unfortunately, not uh, obstructed. So he's only going to get one die. And four Vade dice from Evan prove 
I, I hate those those marbly white dice. I just I don't know what they are ever. Um, that Tie Fighter cannot shoot. Oh, so it's Kagi shooting, no damage, nothing. Big dice. This has got to be the shuttle or the uh, the Upsilon with uh, two damage onto the shuttle. Is this the Tie Fighter? Two damage. Uh, Kagi's, I believe, only taken, yeah, taken two, uh, because the Mining Guild tie can't shoot when it's on a rock. Right. This is a good position for that Mining Guild tie fighter, actually, because uh, you can just continue to bump the, uh, the shuttle. The shuttle. Well, the shuttle can't stop. Like, no. It stop this round, so it can't stop next round. So if he does a, like a one hard or a two hard, puts himself right in the front there, the Upsilon's still going to get another... Yeah, because the Upsilon can just continue slow rolling, and, and bumping, with, sorry, bumping with a mining tie would prevent Evan from doing some sort of move that could potentially escape the front arc of the Upsilon. So uh, it's, good, uh, it's a good positional awareness from Tim in that regard. Uh, Tim's Lando, meanwhile, really has to turn around and get back into the game as quick as possible. Tim's trying to get as many guns onto Kagi as possible. And I think just because it's the, the target of the opportunity, um, or a, a target of opportunity, certainly Evan could do something similar um, with the shuttle as to what um, Tim did last turn with the Upsilon, do a light maneuver, stay stressed, and um, try and... Um, you know, get a gun on target versus bumping. Right. Um, but certainly, uh, there's quick draw being stressed um, because of Captain Phasma, but because she's not in arc, um, uh, it, it's not, it, he did not get tractored. Um, interesting. I didn't. I didn't quite expect that. I expected him to go all in on uh, on Kagi, right? But he didn't. He yeah. decides to. I guess. I guess he sees an opportunity here to potentially and I, uh, I, take out Quick Draw. And I believe Quick Draw is down to, to one or no shields. Uh, I'm not sure how much damage he took then. Um, but certainly Quick Draw doesn't want to stick around in in that five die arc. Um, Tim here switching targets. He's got to get Lando in and uh, fighting. And that's with a... With uh, the big three forward, he's got to uh, move that arc again, I think. Oh, no, he's a boost. So I think if does this, oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, it, see so that? That's a failed action from, from Lando. Ooh. Seg Segnor's loop. Quick draw only took one? Yeah, he's only taken one shield. Wow, okay. So then that, that other attack must have been from the proton torpedo and not the second attack from quick draw, which is what I, I thought it was. Now here's um, a two bank from the shuttle. I forget if that is um, blue or not. Clearly not because he's keeping the, uh, the stress, but the shuttle does now have a rear arc that allows him to have a three die attack on that TIE fighter, and he can Vader the TIE fighter at the back as well. So here's a, a one bank from Quick Draw. It looked we got, we got a, a, a sloop there from from the E wing. I'm hoping the E wing had a target lock from before. Here's a barrel roll from Quick Draw to get out of arc. Uh, I'm not sure if he made it. All right, let's see. Uh, is it range one? Nope. Range two, but all paint there. And the Upsilon takes three more. Shields down. A shields down on the Upsilon. It's a real rough rough ride for Tim here. Now, that rear arc is uh, not something I was thinking about. Uh, on the, the Lambda shuttle, I mean, I've right? talked about it a bunch, but I was completely forgot about it in the last round. And uh, looks like uh, Lando's going to have a shot there. Oh, you think don't it's a trick shot? I don't know if it's obstructed, closest to the closest, but certainly 
Uh, the Lambda is stressed, so he'll be rolling an extra die. And he's got, uh, this is a great position for him to use Forlom again. Right. Um, he's got Hotshot Gunner, not that that matters here. And uh, certainly this is going to, he needs to get, he uh, needs to do plenty. Of, it looks like they did rule it as obstructed. So he's got a... Four dice. Tri he's got Trick Shot, It's so he's got plus, plus the stress, so he's got a four die attack. Here comes Forlom. Nope, he did not use Forlom. I know, and the shuttle takes uh, sh takes one. It's a shame because Lando was stressed; he wasn't able to use his ability to roll oh, those dice, right? Oh, right. Yeah. Of course. All right. So next up is uh, this looks like a. Uh, ooh, L three thirty seven. So this was a proton torpedo shot from the E wing. Uh, and it looks like L337 got flipped to reroll all the attack dice. Uh, crit comes out. It looks like a structural damage. I mean, that's not what you want to see. All right. Ugh. Three. That's a uh, rough round for the Lambda. The Lambda is almost off the table. So the Lambda is down to three hull. So he lost a shield from the Lambda's attack. Yeah, he, that was rough. Bunch of swings there. Tim got enough damage into Kagi that I think he's got to be happy with that. That mining tie is going to be able to follow up and... Uh, chase and do damage maybe get it off the board um, forcing Evan he's gonna have to start reinforcing out the back there um, how he's gonna how Tim's gonna deal with uh, an undamaged rogue squadron escort and uh, a nearly undamaged quick draw I'm not sure if Lando can handle both of those ships uh, Thanison to sort of stay in the fight has got to stay stay on those on those white uh, white hard twos just slamming into the back of quick draw and trying to to get some damage in. Certainly if he's going to be pointed, if he's going to be here, and then if Lando's going to end up, you know, somewhere in this this area, um, he's got to try and get two sh two good shots on something, and uh, that that Upsilon needs tokens to get to get moving. Or to, to start pushing some damage through. Or he can just, you know, roll high, hope for high variance, and... Uh, Roll them bones. Gamble. <coughs> Evan in the lead here because he's been able to get half on Thanison and Seaver off the board. But Lando's right. very close to half. Oh, look at this. So this, look, this looks like a block, a setup for a block here from uh, from the Mining Guild tie. If he barrel rolls in front of... Uh, yeah, look at this. Yeah. Um, again, I'm not, I'm not sure if... Um, Evan might be doing the two bank again. Certainly, that's white. He stays stressed. He's probably gonna be out of Lando's arc, and um, he can shoot out the rear. So moving fast isn't gonna be the end of the world. Right, but this I think this move prevents a hard two, which would put Kagi back into the game as far as being able to shoot again. Um, I forget if if the hard twos are, are red or not. I don't. I just don't think that blocks. Like if that were a 1.0 shuttle, that would block a lot of maneuvers. In 2.0, I don't know if it blocks enough. That's a great setup for a block there. Um, if if uh, the nave, not nave, if the rogue squadron escort bumps, if it does, uh, if it bumps, it's going to be eating a, a huge damage, a huge amount of damage there from the upsilon. I'm looking forward to seeing where Evan's going to go. Uh, if you went quick with the shuttle and uh, oh, target lock from Lando onto quick draw. All right. So uh, that looks like a four forward there from the uh, from the E wing, not blocked. Gets out of dodge. Tim proxying the Lando. Looks like uh, all of Evans' target locks are on Lando. Ooh. Does that four forward clear? Yeah, just barely. Just. Okay. But can he barrel roll out of the way? He can barrel roll and boost absolutely. But Lando's target lock is on Quickdraw, who is also stressed. So, um, 
that's going to be a good opportunity to strip the shields from uh, from quick draw there. But here's the bear roll to get out of arc. You know what? What do you think about this? What do you think about perhaps uh, keeping the E wing there in front of in front of Lando? Just to force Tim to think about shooting either the E Wing or the Quick Draw. There, Quick Draw bumps right into Lando. And Lando, no shot this round. Okay, it's well, I just an I guess sorry. I answered my question. Because <laughs> um, if, if Quick Draw was going to bump into Lando, then now Lando has zero shots, whereas before I thought Quick Draw was going to be shot at by Lando. Mm -hmm. uh, in which case, like maybe forking, like forcing Tim to make a decision between shooting the E Wing or shooting. Uh, Quick draw. Now um, that Tim did bump Evan there, I'm not sure uh, to what end. Mm -hmm. um, no, no. I think they decided that it didn't bump. That's uh, terrifying. Now is that a blue maneuver? Uh, uh, it is a blue maneuver. Ooh. Um, that's bad news is, for that. That's <laughs> bad, bad news for that guy. Because because not only uh, not only is he going to get a rear shot, he gets to Vader that ship now, right? Correct. Yeah, and there's no green token on. There is no green token. So that's going to be an automatic damage onto that uh, that Tie Fighter. So we're going to see Quick Draw shooting Thanos, and Thanos, and there's there's Vader. So that uh, that Mining Guild Tie actually has two damage. Uh, so he, he's on one hull. This looks like a range one shot here. Uh, yeah, this is going to be Quick Draw on Thanos. So because it's at the rear, it only has uh, three dice. And then it's in a uh, of 80, 80 ship, dodges right. it. Uh, so here we have the, the shuttle shooting out the rear. Um, oh, spending the focus, takes a hit, and that's a dead TIE fighter. Tim discovering that TIE fighters are still TIE fighters and suffer from sudden TIE explosion disease. Then it's in uh, range, one in quick draw, I believe. This uh, has the has the potential to be real rough, uh, depending on how Tim rolls. He should roll 2.5 hits on average. Oh, it was range two. He nice. rolls four, um, and Evan gets one. Are you going to spend elusive, Evan? I think you got it right. I think you you're, have you're to taking as well. a crit if you. No, I guess you're not taking a crit if you don't. But you are losing both shields. Uh, so he. All, uh, there's some discussion if he's already spent Elusive, because mm -hmm. Elusive only recharges if you do a red maneuver, which Evan has been avoiding, so he has not used it so far. Does not does not do anything. Um, I believe he takes uh, three damage, and we'll see what the crit is. Oh, he took two damage? Okay. We'll figure it out. He took three? And... That shot was negated. That was Quick Draw's last shield, so he took a shield and. It was a direct hit. Ah. Yep. I see. Quick Draw taking the direct hit. Now that's what Tim needs mm -hmm. to get back in this game. Um, I think uh, if we think back to five minutes ago or ten minutes ago, and I was saying like he's got to figure out how to deal with these things. Now he's at range one. The end of the engagement phase, Phasma gives him a stress. Right. Because he got a stress in arc of Thanison, Thanison gives him a tractor beam. He's now tractor beamed and stressed and pointed at a rock. Um, that's a real rough position for Quick Draw. If he goes forwards, he's 50 50 chance of dying. If he does a, a hard maneuver, uh, like a hard turn, right, then um, he's going to stay stressed. Uh, and Lando's going to get to to do reroll shenanigans, so uh, so it's either go through a rock or stay stressed. Yeah. And then you got Kagi behind you, or not Kagi? Sorry, Thanison behind you as well. Yeah. Kagi's not. I didn't like really able to 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 get in there and, right. and help at this point. Um, certainly, the E wing has to start to do uh, work, and L 33 has been knocked out. So um, if Tim does a, a very short maneuver. Again, he's in a good place to use four llama for the second time. Right. Uh, the Ewing needs to get another proton torpedo off. I think it, uh, unless he's shot it twice. I yeah, I think just, both of the proton torpedoes are gone. Uh, they are both gone. All right, yep. then the the Ewing starts to needs to start getting damage into Lando. Um, otherwise, because when Quick draws down, Tim's going to jump into the lead by one point. Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't liking Tim's chances. Uh, 
a few turns ago, but uh, that really uh, that really uh, effective attack on quick draw turned things right around. And now we're starting to see the control elements of uh, Tim's build come into come into play here. And you you know Tim, right? Mm -hmm. Like Tim, at least from the the list that I've seen him fly, really loves his control pieces. Yeah, and and you can see he sacrificed half health on the Upsilon and two turns of hard twos while stressed to get that shuttle into a position where three turns later it was going to be useful and he and he he got what he wanted which was a good shot on quick draw he happened to roll well which is what he needed there to get back into this game to get off the stress so um, I'm not sure how he's rotated the arc there So, so he did an all stop. So the shuttle stopped. Was this a coordinate action, perhaps? Uh, no. Yes. Okay. No, how he would not. Yeah, because pattern analyzer a, right. co a coordinate to turn the arc okay. from the upsilon. Um, here's the boost, um, which is red. I'm not sure if that's the best maneuver in the world, because then you can't use your Lando ability, because right. that predicates you not being stressed. Um, well, you can't also forelom anymore because that would take him off the board if he decided to forelom this turn. That's so true. I, I think the hope is that uh, Evan was going to go do a two, or sorry, some sort of turn maneuver on this side. Perhaps that's what he's banking on. Let's see if that's what Evan actually ends up doing. But first, we're going to have to see uh, Kagi make his move as well as the Rogue Squadron Rogue Escort. Squadron first. Escort. Now those Rogue Squadron escorts are pretty, uh, pretty tough with uh, proton torpedoes and mm -hmm. R3s. I'm not sure if the fire control system is, has done Evan much work this game, but certainly he could hard to. He's looking to coordinate here something on to. What are you going to coordinate on? Now if he coordinates a boost, and now he's just going to coordinate focus. That's fair. Well, that makes sense. If uh, if Evan's going to try to do a Segnor's loop with the Ewing, right? Uh, I think last turn was the turn to do that. He could have had a shot on mm -hmm. uh, on Lando's Falcon, um, which would have been really useful that turn. Right. Um, so here's a Signor's loop. Um, I was expecting a hard two and then a barrel roll or a boost for a shot. Um, yeah, I don't think uh, I don't think he's going to get a shot this turn. But look at oh. look at this, Evan. I think I think that Evan puts him on the rock. Dodges the arc and. I don't think that puts him on the rock, no. It does not. Jeez. He dodges the arc and the rock. Wow. He's in Tim's head. What can I say? And he rotates. So uh, the SF has a great action bar. Mm -hmm. All the actions are white, and they all link into a white rotate. So he swings that back around the front. He's going to get a four-die attack into Lando. Um, and if he'd done damage with the Nave last turn, that might be more meaningful. Right. Um, but certainly Quick Draw might die here if he spends the focus. He um, just has to worry about being attacked by uh, Thanison, right? Yes. I mean, that's four dice versus two. I don't, I don't know if... It uh, really depends on how... So it's two eyeballs and a hit, right? That's what Evan rolled? Yeah, so he's not going to spend the yeah. focus. He's going to save it for defense. Because, I mean, you weren't going to kill Lando anyway, so what's the point? I believe that does get Lando to below half, though, yeah. Okay. With 21 minutes left in the game, uh, Evan does have a... Ooh, there's Thanison rolling hit crit. Focus to an evade. Okay, so that was a that was actually the right call by Evan there. To not That's spend a dead the focus. ship. Oh, what no, happened? No, he died. I would have spent the focus. Oh, yeah. okay, sorry. I, sorry, I thought he he evaded twice. So the odds of getting so the up the Upsilon throwing four dice is probably going to get two hits, and then uh, Evans' chances of rolling two like a an evade focus uh, or a double evade are much less than um, the average. So uh, he would have had to roll very well to stay alive there. Um, which is probably what he was hoping for. An extra two damage on Lando right now will be pretty hot. Um, but certainly because he was able to get it below half, he still has the lead. And um, it's... Uh,
Evans got to play a pretty cagey about and, and keep that rogue squadron escort alive, keep Kagi alive, and um, well, I mean, try to preserve is, MOV to uh, win the game. Lando's not going to have not going to be relevant at least in the next turn. He's got to spend a turn. He can't even do a well. He can't even do a blue maneuver with uh, with Lando next turn. That doesn't take him off the board. He's going to turn in with uh, Thanison. He's going to do a white two maneuver to at least yeah. get him a little bit closer to the action here. He's going to remain stressed though, and uh, it doesn't look like he's going to be able to get any shots either. We've we've seen him do that a couple of times, right? Um, and certainly Tim has not Tim. Uh, Evans got. His E-Wings target lock is on Lando. Right. Uh, and here we're going to see the shuttle, I believe, bump. So the yeah, E-Wing has like just it. focused. So my concern here... So had... Put the template down the wrong way around. Right. Um, had the E-Wing boosted or barrel rolled, he might have gotten into range one, um, leading to being stressed and repositioned and being put in all sorts of nonsense spaces. Right. So here we're going to see, we're probably going to see a Vadering um, and and some damage. Two attacks to, to Evan's two attacks to Tim's one attack. And we'll see how that swings out. Uh, Evan's been able to isolate the Epsilon away from Lando. So... It'll be interesting to see if he's going to be able to push damage through. So two hits, uh, and the Upsilon just takes two more. Well, that means that <clears throat> if Evan gets lucky here, you can take out the Upsilon, right? Um, I don't know if he's going to be able to take it out, but certainly putting damage into it for sure. It's cocked, I think. So just one damage on two. Yeah, he wasn't, uh, he wasn't in range to Vader or anything, right? I guess he's uh, well, he's, 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 he's spent the Vader on uh, on offense there for two. Yep. So that's going to be one. It's like two two HP left. Yeah. Yeah. It's got two two hit points left, uh, and we'll see here. Looks like he's shooting at the shuttle. Direct hit on the shuttle. Is that enough to kill it? No, it looks like four total. Wait, so, so Keggy's at one HP now? So actually here, I expect um, Keggy to go very slow, mm -hmm. right? He might stop do or do a one forward. Right. It'll be interesting to see, because Tim's probably going to do a green maneuver, clear his stress, do an action. And then the E-Wing is probably going to, and Based on Evan's previous behavior, I would imagine the Ewing might do like a five forward here, right? And then uh, have a focused target locked attack on on Lando and do quite a bit of damage. If it does come down to a situation where it's the Ewing versus Lando, Lando's going to have a bit of advantage in that regard. I no, think. I don't. I don't think so because Lando has to move first. Sorry, Tim has an issue. Yeah, mind. yeah. So because Lando has to move for first. That gives the Ewing the ability to reposition like a high uh, initiative ace. Something that um, Evan was talking about in his pregame chat when he was talking about um, drafting Kagi. He said he drafted Kagi because it had a bid uh, and that would help him because uh, Kagi was four and he was also looking at the Rogue Squadron Escort who was a four and uh, it gave him... Uh, an advantage over some of the other draftable ships. So here's a blue maneuver from the Upsilon, clearing his stress. Um, that takes him out of the fight, though, for a... It does. It takes him out of the fight for probably another three rounds. And it looks like he's jammed uh, the E-Wing there, stripping his target lock. We have a slow maneuver here from Lando coming in, sitting between the rocks. So let's see, this is the E-Wing. Well, there's that fast maneuver. And I wonder if we're going to see... Um, if he stays at range one, he's going to get stressed at the end of the engagement. So there is somewhat of a benefit to boosting and barrel rolling. Or, yeah. He, oh, no, he can't do both. 
He could boost the target lock. No, he can't boost the target lock. So he's just gonna he's just gonna target lock. Cause he, he can't boot he can't target lock within range one or two, right? Right. Oh, I expected to stop there from the shuttle, but uh, he's coming in. He might What's be it? able to kill. Uh, well, that's gonna give uh, that's gonna give Evan two attacks on Lando's shuttle, or sorry, on Lando's ship. Uh, Thanison can't uh, can't shoot this turn. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, going to be a. Uh, yeah. Now the interesting thing is whether or not Tim's going to go ahead and use Forlom again this turn. That looks like he's coordinated a focus onto the E-wing from from Kagi, mm -hmm. so that the E-wing does have a double modded attack at range two. Without a stress, uh, so, so this is this is going to be Lando spending his focus. Yeah, I think this is ta attacking Kagi. Yeah, range, range three, three, and Kagi dies. He takes two. Oh. Now, fortunately for Evan, because they're both at the same initiative, he's going to have to get a counterattack here on Lando. Yeah. So there's Kagi, and does he have a target lock on? Yeah, he does. He must. Looks like two hits there. Uses the force. Um, Lando takes hit crit. Looks like weapons failure. And here comes the knave. It's not what you want to see on the hit crit. Reroll with uh, fire control system. Ouch. Two hits and a crit. That's a dead Lando's Falcon. So now Keggy is dead, right? Yeah, there we go. And Kagi is dead. So now, now that it's just come down to the E-wing versus Thanison, I mean, I mean, I, I don't want to call it now, but Tim's Tim's uh, known to be a player to, to tip the king, and uh, the the Upsilon's a hell of a, a ship to tip. But uh, I imagine that there's going to be he should not forget to stress uh, the E-wing here. Um, but I imagine that there is, yeah, there we go. There's uh, not much he can. <laughs> uh, oh, how do you get stressed there? Oh, for Phasma? Yeah. Okay. And uh, there's uh, not much he can do from this position. Um, <laughs> Is that, that's tipping the king right there, right? There we go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I have to say that um, I'm actually impressed by the way Tim flew his Upsilon shuttle. I know it's. It's considered it was, to be very unwieldy. Also, the fact that in a 2.0 game, there are so many large base ships. Yeah. I mean, that's a re direct like result that. of it being uh, a draft thing where yeah. it, it was pretty much based on the choices of our league boss here. But still, that was an interesting match. Interesting.